This is why the Israel-Palestine situation will have more of an effect than you think. Because the current Israel-Palestine conflict will have a turmoil snowball effect on other wars and conflicts happening around the globe. Think of it this way, while many countries and committees spend their time trying to decide justice and whom to allocate money to, that is time lost for help in the Ukraine-Russia war. This will cause thousands more to die while the battle is postponed. Moreover Iran will have to join in this conflict, which will immensely change the grounds and possibility for Azerbaijan to try and take over Armenia. Already Azerbaijanis have unrightfully stepped foot and taken claim on Armenian ground, but without a local partner, and more attention going to another war the effects could be disastrous. There is much worse that can happen though, but before we can talk about the future effects we have to understand the history, so here it is. The Jews had lived in ancient Israel until various empires conquered and expelled them. Each time they were allowed to return. The last iteration of that was the Roman Empire, which first started to conquer the province of Judea in 63 BC. The Jews had a belief that there was only one God, Yahweh, and that to worship any other God was a sin. The Romans had a political practice to impose the Roman Emperor as a God to worship. For the other regions they conquered where the people there believed in multiple gods, this wasn't too big of an issue. However, I'm sure you can see why this is an issue for the Jews. Tensions kept rising. The Jews fought several wars of independence, which partially received renewed vigor through Jesus' preachings and activities, but the Jews didn't have a chance against the mighty Roman Empire. Eventually the Romans got fed up and started to expel the Jews from Judea, a process that took the span of several decades starting roughly in 100 AD. This was the final time it happened. During medieval times fast forward to the 600s AD. In the Arabian Peninsula, the Prophet Muhammad receives a vision from God and founds the religion of Islam. Over the course of the following decades, the Arabs conquer vast swathes of North Africa and the Middle East, slowly converting these populations to Islam and Arabizing their cultures and peoples. We have three religions that now share the same root, they trace back their spiritual lineage to Abraham, a key religious figure in the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Meanwhile, Jews living in the now Christian kingdoms of Europe are excluded from many professions and crowded into small corners of cities called ghettos or plots of undesirable rural land called shtetls. At best they would be tolerated, at worst they would be expelled and massacred. In the 1600s, two large Jewish populations eventually made their way to two places, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, or the area of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, modern-day Poland, Ukraine, Belarus, and the Baltics. These Jews are called the Sephardic and Ashkenazim Jews respectively. There are also Mizrahi Jews in the Muslim world that experience similar treatment, they'd sometimes be accepted and sometimes would be persecuted. Industrial era after the French Revolution and the defeat of Napoleon in 1815, Europe started to experience a surge in nationalist movements. No longer were people subjects of a king, they now saw themselves as citizens of a country. But this also meant that many people saw that their countries were only for their own people, France was only for the French, Russia was only for the Russians, etc. Anti-Semitism and hatred against Jews intensified during this time, especially in the former Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which had been split between Russia, Austria, and Prussia, the predecessor state to Germany. In France there was the Dreyfus Affair, in which a French Jewish army officer was wrongly accused of treason and put on trial. In Russia, the Jews that lived in Eastern Europe were routinely expelled by the Russian czars, in which the Russian secret police would go to select villages and towns to terrorize the Jewish populations there and expel them in events known as pogroms. A lot of Jews, especially Ashkenazim Jews, immigrated to the US, Britain and its colonies, or Latin America to escape persecution. However, one Jew named Theodore Herzl had an idea, instead of being outsiders in a country constantly at the majority's mercy, what if the Jews had their own country? What if they could reclaim the promised land of Judea that had been taken from them so long ago? In the 1880s, he forms a movement to return to the Promised Land, Zionism, and organizes voyages and settling expeditions to Judea, called Aliyahs, now the province of Palestine in the Ottoman Empire. At first, this wasn't an issue. But as more Jews came, and as the Arabs also had nationalist movements to establish a free nation from the rule of the Ottoman Turks, the Arabs and Jews started to slowly come to a head. The World Wars The Ottoman Empire joins World War I in 1915 on the side of Germany, Central Powers, who are fighting the UK, France, and Russia, the Entente. Britain owns Egypt at this time so a war front begins there. The British and French start sponsoring an Arab rebellion against the Ottomans, the Entente powers promise the Arabs that they will have their own country if the Entente wins the war. The Central Powers lose the war and the Ottoman Empire is carved up in a peace treaty. However, the British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour makes a public declaration in 1917 that Britain would support a Jewish state in Palestine. The British and French also have a secret agreement called the Sykes-Picot Agreement, in which they would divide the Ottoman territories of the Middle East amongst themselves. The British essentially promised Palestine to the Arabs, the Jews, and themselves, making a promise they couldn't keep. The Arabs are understandably pissed and feel betrayed. They start launching a rebellion against the British and the French, but this rebellion is crushed. Meanwhile, Jews hear the Balfour Declaration and are excited to believe that the British support their claim to the Promised Land, so they start immigrating to the now British Mandate of Palestine in large numbers. This is especially important since the US, Brazil, and many other countries start closing off their countries to Jewish immigration. The Arabs see this as a colonialist ploy to replace the Arab population in Palestine with a loyal Jewish population, and so start fighting with the Jews that are settling in Palestine. Multiple violent conflicts break out over the 1920s and 1930s, heightened by both Jews and Arabs forming their own militias. In 1936, the violence in Palestine is too much for the British to handle, 
so they close off Palestine to further Jewish immigration to appease the Arabs. At the same time, Germany has elected the Enzis into power. Nazi Germany starts World War II and starts conquering vast swathes of Europe. Jews are desperately trying to flee, but no country will take them and Jewish refugees are sometimes deported back into NZ hands. When the NZIS invade the Soviet Union and conquer vast portions of Eastern Europe, they suddenly control land where many Jews live and decide to implement the Holocaust in full. Eventually, NZ Germany is defeated, but the Nuremberg trials display these crimes for the world to see. However, the Jews are convinced that Europe will never accept them, especially since programs are still happening in Europe after the war. So now that we know that we can clearly see that this isn't very black and white, obviously this attack from Israel has unalived people and the four cannot be characterized as anything but wrong, however we can't decisively make wrong or right claims because it is a very complicated situation. What do you think?